everyone welcome back to my channel if you're new here my name is Shayla thank you so much for joining me um, today we are going to be um, making some covers for some journals um, I'm really excited to bring y'all along with me um, so let's go ahead and jump into it so some things you'll need um, I'm gonna be making these journals a certain type of way uh, I do have um, some books as you can see here um, a lot of them are already taken apart but I will take one apart on camera just so you guys can see in case you're unsure of how to do it yourself um, all of these books I did thrift um, so if you're looking to get some books just head to your local thrift store I'm sure they have a ton of options to choose from um, so basically some things that you're going to need, you're going to need, of course, some books or book covers, um, which I have here. Um, and then you're going to need some fabric. So um, the fabric I've already pre-cut into strips. Um, I'm going to be making one inch spines today for my journals. Um, so I cut these to two inches. Um, you could cut them more if you want, or like a bigger um, if you do want, you know, more of the fabric to show up on the side, I'm not too concerned with that. Um, I won't be decorating these journals, like the covers, um, as of yet, only because, um, for the journals, uh, anyways, um, I usually add in the decorations later on. So, um, we're going to go ahead and jump into it and I'll kind of explain things, um, as we move along. Um, some other things really quickly that you might need. Um, I always like to keep a pencil handy just for marking things, um, for measuring. Um, I have a lovely box cutter or utility knife um, that just kind of helps cut through thicker materials. Um, I do also have my handy dandy scissors. Um, of course, you need a ruler. And I did use to cut the fabric um, this Fiskars rotary cutter. Um, which is incredibly sharp, but um, it does cut through fabric really well. Not really necessary if you have scissors, but it's a nice thing to have. And then, of course, um, I did use my paper trimmer, um, which is also Fiskars. Um, for the spines, uh, I do have some cardboard. You can use matte board. Um, you could probably even use just like a thick paper, maybe double it up a few times um, to get you know, a nice little sturdy spine, um, but I just use some cardboard. And then today I will be using um, some Beacon 3-in-1 glue. Um, just this grabs really well, I feel like, um, for multiple medias, and um, it works really well with fabric. So I'll be using this today as well. So let's go ahead and jump into it. Any other materials, of course, you'll see as we go along, but I think that's that pretty much covers it. Um, so we'll start with deconstructing a book um, since these are already ready to go. So I'm gonna take this guy and this is just a thrifted book um, that I've had that I do actually need to deconstruct anyways. Um, so all I'm gonna do, I actually like using my utility knife or box cutter for this one. And see how there's like a gap right there where the spine is? Hopefully y'all can see that. Um, older books, it'll be a lot easier to deconstruct than a newer book. Um, but all you have to do is take your, you know, knife, be very careful with your fingers. Um, and then all I do is I just run it across this little crease right here. And since I'm not going to be using the spine um, on any of these, actually, because if you use it, um, a lot of times it is not very sturdy if it's an older book. Um, so I cut my own spines, so we won't be using those. Um, but all I'm going to do is I'm just going to run my knife through here. And it's just kind of, I mean, it's pretty simple. You might get a little pushback, but nothing crazy. Um, there we go. And of course, this book is already like slightly falling apart, so we're going to have some extra little things. Um, so then the back, same thing. If you need to, sometimes you can just kind of rip it off, but sometimes it needs a little help. Cut through there. And there we go. We've detached this book, which I'll set aside. 
Um, and we have this lovely little cover now. Um, I won't be using this cover since it's significantly smaller than these, but um, but yeah, just so everyone knows kind of how to take off, take the book guts out of the actual cover, um, that's how you do it. So we'll set this one aside. Okay, so I'm going to start with the first book, and I am doing a lot of them. It's kind of like a mass make thing, but also it is... Um, so that way, you know, if you've never done this before, maybe you need to watch it a few times in order to feel confident to do it. I know I'm very visual. Um, like I'm a very visual learner. So let's go ahead. And since some of these, I think all of them mostly are intact with the uh, original spine, I'm going to remove the original spine. Um, this one actually has a flyleaf page, which is this guy. It's like the inner page before the words. So we'll remove that, um, and all I'm gonna do is just kind of cut through here. It does not have to be perfect. I don't cut in straight lines very well, although that looked pretty good, I will say. <laughs> um, same thing for the other side, though. I'm just cutting off this original spine. So just like that, these you can actually keep if they're in decent condition or they have, you know, neat writing on. You could make little bookmarks out of these um, or belly bands for your journals. Um, so you don't necessarily have to throw this away either. So we'll just set that aside for now. So now we have two lovely book covers, just like that. Um, so I am going to, and it goes like that. Um, I'm going to set these aside and then inside I've just been putting the fabric just to keep everything organized and we're going to go on to the next one. So next one, same thing. Um, I'm just going to cut off this spine here. There we go. Oh, almost. And my goal hopefully is through, you know, repetition. One, I get to make some journals with you guys, but also that, you know, you feel more confident to maybe tackle this yourself and it gives you enough time to where you can try it, you know, while I'm doing one of the seven. I think I picked, pulled seven. Um, so there's the second one. Pretty simple stuff, right? Nothing too crazy. Oh, and let's put that back in there. So here is the third one. I actually thought this one was kind of cool. Um, it is actually already ready to go but it's Swing and Turn Texas Play Party Games. Um, so I thought that one was neat, just cause you know, I am from Texas. Um, I live in the Austin area. So, you know, it's near and dear to my heart. <laughs> um, okay, so now this is another one. Um, these are Read Reader's Digest books. These are actually really great, I feel like for um, people making junk journals, they usually always have some sort of pretty decorative pattern cover. And I feel like they're always really nice quality. Like I've even found older ones and they seem to hold up pretty well. So there's that one. And you're kind of getting a sneak peek of the fabrics that I've chosen for each one. Um, but so again, really pretty cover. Um, they're just, I feel like they're just really nice books to use for journals. Okay. This one is a little bendy, so I'm gonna have to kind of manipulate it here, but that's okay. Just to get a good cut. Okay. The fabric in there. Um, okay. And I will say it is messy taking apart books. There's a lot of little, um, a lot of little dust debris. So if you're sensitive to dust, especially if it's like older books, maybe just be a little careful when you're taking it apart because it will fly. The dust, the dust will fly. <laughs> um, okay. And see this one, I did leave a lot. So I'm going to go back in and cut some of that off. There we go, much better. And you can clean them up afterwards. I'm just trying to kind of get through them a little bit just because I know, you know, 
this is relatively simple as far as a task is concerned um, but when you're doing seven of them it can take a lot longer so and then this is the last one so again just removing that spine which this one has no resistance whatsoever it was ready to come off okay so now that we have these so the next step, um, which we can start with this one, I know these some of these look a little bit worn, but that's okay, because you can always cover it up later on. I'm not concerned about it whatsoever. So um, one thing I did forget to mention, which I'm kicking myself for, um, is this tape right here. So this is um, seam tape. You can get this at most hardware stores. Um, it's not super expensive for the amount that you get and I've had this tape roll of tape forever um, But it sticks really well. It's kind of like duct tape on steroids. I would say <laughs> Like once you put it down, you cannot get it back up um, But that's okay. Um, that's what we want. You know that good reinforcement So I'm gonna be using that today like I said, I did mention duct tape. Duct tape works great. Or if you have a really sturdy packing tape, that could also work too. Um, but this is basically going to build our book um, with the spine that we've cut. So my spines, I chose to do one inch spines, which doesn't really give me too many signatures, um, you know, or bundles of pages that I can put in my journal just because it is a smaller spine, but that's okay. This is kind of like a be beginner's journal thing. Um, so I didn't want to make huge spines um, because then I have to make more signatures um, and it just makes the process longer. So I have these spines that I cut. They are one inches and essentially all I did was I measured the cover um, to where this would sit nicely in the cover like that. So all we're going to do is we're going to take this lovely tape, if I can find the end of it. I always have trouble finding the end part. Okay, here we go. Let's see, hopefully it'll peel easy. Like I said, the stuff is very sticky. <laughs> um, okay, and we're almost there. I think, or trying to find out where it is here. Okay, now, oh. There we go. So I'm going to cut that bit off. We'll just fold it over. And so now all I'm going to do is I'm going to take my spine just like that. And I am going to go just a little bit over. So I'm going to put my spine, I'm going to put the tape down if I can. If not, you know, just put your spine in the middle of your packing tape, your duct tape, whatever you're using. That is slightly crooked, that's okay. So now all I'm gonna do is just put right next and make sure that these are the correct orientation, but I'm just going to put these right next to this um, and I want to make sure that when I do, you know, they're not overlapping too much. Like I can still bend it because that's kind of the point. Um, you know, you need to be able to shut the book that you're making. So I just put those right next to it, just like that. Granted, they can still bend. And then I'm going to fold this tape over just like that. Make sure you get it in all the little grooves. Um, which this tape is pretty good at sealing. I'm sorry for that awful tape sound, but you will probably hear it again, so you're warned. And then I'm just gonna fold this over, just like that. And same thing, I'm just gonna smush it down. And then right at the top here, hopefully you can see that, right at the top here, I'm just gonna cut it. So, Just gonna give it a little cut there we go so now we have built our first book 
Um, so I'll leave this flat and then I'll just fold it because see it can still fold. So it's technically a book, but we still have to cover it. So we're going to leave that flat and then we're going to work on the next one. And yes, I'm holding the tape because I don't want, <laughs> I don't want to lose my spot. Um, make sure that your books again are the right orientation kind of separate them make sure you're using the right if you're making multiple using the right length um because I have a few different lengths of books here and same thing remember we're just gonna lay out our tape just like so and then we're gonna put our lovely little we're gonna attempt to put it in the middle oh that was pretty good just like that our spine is in the middle and now we come in with the book sides and make sure that they're even. And you can kind of feel where the end is. It's okay if this part overlaps, that's just paper. You just don't want to overlap like the actual cardboard part of the book, if that makes sense. So there we go, we have that. Let's go ahead and do that on the other side. And then we're gonna come around. Okay, lay that down. And then we're just gonna cut this end right here. Perfect. And then I just, sometimes I take my fingernails and just kind of press it into the seams. Um, if you don't have fingernails, <laughs> you can use like some tweezers. Um, you could use a, if you have a bone folder, you can use that as well. Um, you know, just really something, you could use a ruler um, to just kind of push it in there. But I'm confident that that will do the trick with my fingers, so we'll move on. And so basically this is, you know, what you do to kind of build the base of your book. Again, I know I'm gonna be repetitive here, but just, you know, we don't all learn at the same rate. Um, make sure it's the right length to your book um, and then make sure that your book is the right orientation for when you adhere it. Okay, so. Like that tape's gonna take my fingerprints off or something. Okay, so laying that down, perfect. And then we're just gonna put the first one, oop, at the first one, right, and I'm gonna. And this one I'm actually going to cut a little bit because I feel like it could be cut a little more. Perfect. Oh, don't stick. Okay, much better. And then... We'll do a little trim on this side too. There we go. And I'm not too concerned with how straight it is because we're covering it with fabric and you won't see any of that. So let's again fold that over. We're going to take our tape and if you feel like your tape's not as sturdy go ahead and do you know wrap it around a few times it definitely does not matter um since we're going to be covering it so just whatever you know until you're comfortable with the sturdiness of it you can just keep putting some tape on there so so there we go just kind of make sure it's in there perfect okay so we have that one. Let's move on. All right. Okay. All 
And let me see. Hang on just a second. Okay. I just want to make sure that that was accurate. I was just double checking my making sure I'm using the right one here because that's important even I get tripped up on things so okay there we go and again just make sure they're the right orientation here and put one there And there's that. Okay. And again. Just doing some taping. I have to say these are turning out pretty well okay so now we're moving on to this one which is not a reader's digest book um, it is a little bit taller and I did cut still one inch but um, one to match this book so before I let's see if I can just keep that there or something um, okay so before I put this on I'm just gonna make sure that because this one's already kind of frayed so I just wanted to make sure that we are good and I think we are so let's just do what we were doing okay all right There we go. Okay, and now we're gonna put this one right here. And this one. Right there. Fold this over. And then. And then after this, we have, <clears throat> excuse me, two more left. And then we will get started with the fabric part. So, okay. All right, so we have that one. And we'll put the fabric there. Um, and now we have these two little books. Okay, perfect. And so really, I mean, you know, you can, there's other ways to make journals too um, that are not book related. I think making one out of a book is probably one of my favorite ways to do, which technically I think some people would call this altered books. Um, but it is one of my favorite kind of ways to make journals. Um, just because you kind of have the cover built for you and it really kind of challenges you to use the cover, you know, whatever might be on the cover. Granted, I do pick out books that I feel like I can work with. So, you know, I'm not too limited on that. Um, but there are numerous ways. You don't have to use a book if you don't want to. I've made one out of like, you know, cardboard. Um, and covered it with like paper but it's definitely whatever your preference is I know some people don't like to cut up books which I totally understand there are some books that I have that I just kind of keep in my collection because they're so 
you know, unique or old and I kind of just want to preserve them. At, I know no one's, you know, paying me to preserve books, but um, I don't know. I just see they're kind of special. So, okay. And this is the last book. Um, just a reminder, again, make sure the orientation is correct and let's do it. Okay, and we're done with the tape, so we don't have to use that anymore. Thank you for sticking it out, especially if you don't like that sound. I apologize. Um, okay, so now we're going to cover our, um, close the knife, make sure we're all safe. But now we're gonna go ahead and cover our um, spines. So something to note, um, you know, if you, it depends on what you wanna do. I personally like um, doing the spine part first, like covering this completely, and then um, putting paper down on the inside. If I'm, usually if I'm making a journal, I'll cover the inside just to keep it, you know, pretty and um, I guess give it a fresh, like, kind of look. But if you want, you can cover this first, like cover the inside with paper and then do the strips last. So that's just an option. So think about that um, when you're making your journals. Today, I'm gonna be covering the fabric first, and then I'm sure in another video, we will, um, you know, cover the inside. So for fabric, this is a one inch spine. I cut two inch strips, um, and if you notice, it doesn't completely cover the front and the back. Like I still have some leftover showing, um, which is fine. Um, but what I'm gonna do is it covers the outside and then when I flip it over on the inside, I have this little strip. It doesn't have to be the full length of the book because this folds over. So essentially you have two strips that are kind of making, you know, one, I guess, cover piece. Um, if you have fabric that is long enough, you could just cut one large strip. It does not have to be two. Um, that's just kind of the way I did it based off of the different pieces of fabric that I had, um, which were mostly, you know, smaller in size. So let's go ahead and jump into it. Now, I like to cover um, the outside first. So we're going to start with that. So I have this Beacon Advanced Craft Glue 3-in-1. Um, it is a clear silicone glue. Um, it works really well. It has a great hold and it does not, um, it's, uh, it's pretty quick to dry. So you don't have to wait around forever. I will say though, um, it can bleed through fabric. So the trick to, for it to not bleed through fabric is to put a good amount down and then take your finger and just kind of rub it to where you don't really see like a bunch of globs. You just It's just kind of one general, um, I guess, smoosh of glue. So, and I can feel it becoming tacky. So let's go ahead and take our fabric. And I am just going to lay it down. Okay, gently make sure it's nice and flat. Want to make sure all the pieces are glued. If you feel that some pieces are not glued, you can always just, you know, put a little bit of glue. Just be careful. Don't want to put too much glue. So I'll just take that and smush it with my finger. 
and then pat it down. Okay, see if there's any on the other side. Okay, same thing, just pat it down. Got a little more here. Okay. Okay, I think that's pretty good. So now we have that, which if you see if I bend it, it's it stays shut, which is what you want. And it's already taking its fruition, it's coming into fruition, whatever you want to call it. Very, very exciting. So now I'm going to take these two pieces here and let me see how I want to do this. So I think we'll go ahead and put this down and then we'll put this down or maybe it'll be the other way we'll do it the other way so we'll just start with this and don't be shy to use the glue it's just make sure that you know you're obviously um smushing it with your finger so There we go. All right, and then And I kind of like to pull the fabric a little bit just to make sure it's nice and like secure when I'm gluing it on the other side. So just something to note. Sorry if you hear my glue whistle. <laughs> uh, okay. There we go. Okay, that's pretty secure. So now we're just going to take this little extra strip and we're literally just going to put it on top. So I'll start with this part and we'll just smush it down. And you could even cut this fabric down if you're like, oh, I don't want to, you know, glue down all that extra fabric. Sure, go ahead. I'm just going to do this part. There we go. And now let's take this. Okay. There we go. Okay, so that is all glued down, which looks great. And we have an adorable little cover. Look at that. Isn't that cute? So very cute. Okay, so we're gonna set this one aside, let it dry, and then we'll go on to the next one. So the next one's very similar. I think these books are siblings. Um, they have kind of the same title, so and it looks like they both came out of this memorial library. Um, so let's see. Okay. Same thing. We're going to start with the back. Put some glue down. Awesome. Okay. 
Okay. So we're gonna take this, lay it down. Make sure it's all glued down. Like I said, if not, you can just, I kind of just go like this to see if there's any, like see right there. And we'll put just a little bit of glue. Perfect. And it's okay, I actually kind of like these little frayed edges. You can always cut them off later, so no worries. Okay, so now we have this guy looking like he's staying on pretty well. So we'll switch over and we'll do this side. Okay. All right, now I'm just gonna one over and then do the other one and like I said I do pull it just a little bit to make sure it has like a nice tight um, glue but and there we go we have that side so now we'll take our other little piece which this piece fits almost perfectly um, so let's go ahead and put some glue down Again, smush it with your finger. Okay. And this one actually has a smidge of overhang, so I'm just going to cut that off. Right, so we have that one. I'm checking for any peely ups, which here are some. I apologize for that glue. <laughs> okay. Okay, so now we have the second one. So go ahead, make sure it's all in there, and then we have a cute little cover so so cute and it doesn't cover up any of the words so that's a win all right so this one will be an interesting one um and the reason i say that is because this material that i'm about to glue is a little more thin it feels like than other materials it's a bandana material so it's pretty thin um so i'm gonna have to be kind of careful with the glue because i don't want um I don't want to have it seep through to the other side. So let's see how it goes. We will figure it out. And I will say typically the materials that I am using is like a cotton um, fabric. So it's, you know, it's pretty sturdy. Um, as far as like seepage of glue and stuff, this fabric is a little thinner. So I'm gonna start with a very thin stream of glue and see if that works. And then we'll go from there. Okay. And I am gonna pull it a little bit just because there are some uh, creases and I don't want those creases to stay and it's looking like it glued down pretty well I have some little extra here that's fine Ooh. 
and I have a glue explosion. We'll use this page. Sometimes that happens when you use the glue a lot, um, you'll get air bubbles. And that is what that was. Okay. Let's take that. I'm going to very gently press it down because I don't want it to seep through. So there we go. We have that one. And I actually see a little seepage right there, which doesn't bother me too much because I think I'm going to add some trim to this eventually. So you probably won't see that part anyways. So we can live with that. But there, there that is what the book will look like. So, so cute, right? Love it. Okay. So now we're going to go to the other side and we're going to do the same thing. We're just going to put the glue down. Okay. And I'm just going to kind of gently pat it in there. Like I said, you don't want to press too hard if it's like a um, very thin fabric because it can bleed through really easily. got those two and now we have this piece which is going to be too long so let's see here I'm going to cut it there and then right about there perfect and we're going to do the same thing And it's kind of best to like wait till it's a little tacky, I feel like, um, before putting it down. There we go. Okay. And so this kind of just goes to show that you don't have to use, you know, um, cotton material you can use other materials as long as you're careful so again this was just like a bandana that I chose to use nothing too crazy Just to make it a little more even it doesn't really bother me all that much but all right now we're gonna do the other sign just go ahead and use that off just a little more sorry if I'm being quiet at this point I am just concentrating okay there we go perfect and now we have this little cover isn't that so cute Ugh, it looks so adorable okay set that one off to dry and I'm just leaving these open to dry 
Um, now it looks like we are going to start on the uh, Reader's Digest books. Um, so I have this lovely material for this one, which I think will be perfect. And I really have to say, like, Reader's Digest books are probably one of my favorite ones to alter. Um, I just think they make really great covers. So if you ever see them, they're usually at most thrift stores. Be sure to pick up one or two and have some fun, play with it, you know. Oop. About time I clean my hands. all these little the great thing about the glue is once it dries you can just kind of peel it off your hand so it's not too too messy or roll it off your hand anyways okay so I know we're gonna have a little bit right here so I'll go ahead and do that Make sure that that edge is glued down since it's kind of in the crease. Um, you don't want it to, when you fold it, not stay. And then the other side looks like we need some glue. Hopefully y'all can see this, I hope so. And if you do get glue on your book, if it's this type of glue, you can just kind of roll it off. So that's kind of nice. It's slightly forgiving. I wouldn't say it's, you know, the most forgiving, but. So there is that one. Very, very cute. So cute. Okay, we're gonna do it to the other side. We'll use that glue. I don't know if you can hear my dog snoring, but. I'm sorry. Yes, he's in here. <laughs> I have a great Pyrenees. His name is Jack. He's a big old fluffy sweetheart. I love him to death. What's funny is I didn't even know great Pyrenees existed. I didn't know that breed was, you know, a breed. Um, I grew up like in a household of German shepherds and um, my husband you know, he was the one that was like, oh, they're the best dogs. You know, he had a dog that was part Great Pyrenees um, and part, I think, Golden Retriever. I don't know. Um, I'm not entirely too sure. But she just had, like, the sweetest demeanor. And he was like, we have to get one of those, you know. Um, so he kind of talked me into it. But we got uh, Jack as a puppy. And, man, he was... A cute little puppy I'll say that <laughs> um, he could stop traffic so I'm sure like most puppies can but he was a sweetheart and he still is he's a great dog um, I love him to pieces and he's a really good pillow too so <laughs> that's just a bonus okay so putting this one down He's looking at me. Yes, I'm talking about you. <laughs> uh, he's also too smart for his own good. I'm sure most, I'm sure pet owners know all about that. So, but I have a cat as well. Um, her name is Pumpkin, although I don't know if she actually knows that name because I just have nicknames for both my pets. So, um, I think Jack definitely knows his name, but Pumpkin is like, what? I just call her mamas or Mau Mau because she meows a lot. <laughs> um, but 
she's also very sweet. We actually found her um, at this apartment complex. She was a kitten. And, you know, we were like, oh, we'll leave. My husband was like, I'll leave her there because, like, her mom, you know, might be coming back. And um, he waited for a while and nobody ever came back for her. And she was kind of injured. So he brought her in and I was so surprised because he swore up and down he would never have a cat ever. Um, and, you know, lo and behold, now we have, we have a little family. So everything works out the way it should, you know. I wanted a cat. He didn't want a cat. Look who brought in a cat. <laughs> um, so... No, but he loves her. And she loves him more than she loves me, which I'll openly admit. I know that's sad. It's sad, but true. <laughs> okay, so I glued that one down as well. So we have that one. And the cover is so, so cute. So I'll put this one aside to dry. And we have three more left. Um, so let's see. So this one, I picked out this fabric which I thought was just cute. It has some cute little lambs. I believe those are just lambs or sheep. I don't know. Um, but I think we'll do this one on that. I kind of like this one though. Okay, we'll do that one on the outside just because it has the cute little lamb on it. All right. And I will say, if anything, make sure the outside is glued down very well. The inside, it does matter, but if you're going to cover it with paper like I will do um, probably in the next video, um, then you don't, it doesn't really need to be like super adhered right this second um, on the inside. So don't worry too much about that. Okay. I think that's good. Trying to make sure I got the little lamb in there. Okay. So, so cute. It's so funny. I have so many like fabrics and stuff. I was like, which one should I do? And I always end up going just for like the florals or, you know, just something more on the basic side. But I have like so many funky um, fabrics to use. So I need to figure out how to incorporate those. Okay. All right. We have that one. Look at how cute that is. <laughs> so adorable. All right. So now let's go on the inside. And I will say, so, you know, however big your spine is, um, consider, you know, when you're cutting your fabric to cut at least one inch larger than that, just so that way you do have a little bit of that wrap around, um, on like the book. So that way you can see, you know, when the book is like closed, you can still see some of that pattern. Um, or at least that's what I prefer, but to each his own, whatever you're comfortable with. Okay. Oh, and I can pull up a little more. Okay. All right, now let's just cut. Ooh, that is, that is an awful cut, wow. Okay, let's try and even that up a little bit. Perfect. All right. Okay. Here's that. Let's glue this down. Thank you so much for sticking around and hanging out with me. I hope you're making something just as amazing. Um, if it's not a journal, you know, whatever your 
heart desires. <laughs> just I feel like just being creative in general it's just I feel like it's you know it's relaxing I don't know I get enjoyment out of it okay there's that one and let's do the other side my poor glue it's getting worked today Got a little extra glue. That's okay. It'll dry. Okay. So there's that one. So, so cute. Oh, I love it. All right. We'll put that one aside. We're like a machine over here. Or at least that's how I feel. <laughs> so here's this one. Okay. We'll go like right there. And then put this. So cute. That one's going to be super cute. of having a glue overflow here that's okay we'll work with it we'll use it okay look at that isn't that cute oh I love it it's like once you make the cover it's like okay well you get really excited to finish it <laughs> a little at a time okay we'll fold this over And then probably cut that. All right. Okay, we have that piece. So let's put the other one on. Could definitely use some of those glues on the edge here. Okay, take our little piece. this little flap down sorry if you could hear that that was my husband laughing <laughs> in the other room I actually got a new mic so I don't know how much it's picking up of everything but I mean I feel like it's pretty good quality so I'll have to see when I edit it but I'm just saying sorry in advance just in case <laughs> Okay. Perfect. Okay. There's that one. So we did that one. Oh, this way. And now we only have um, one left to go. This is the final one. So let's go ahead 
and glue it down. smush okay. there we go That is what it is. Okay, let's turn it around here and I'm actually gonna clean off my glue because it gets a little hard to work with with all that on it. side number two and then we just have the middle piece glue explosion over here. All right. And we're almost there. And then last but not least, Okay, there you have it. That is the final cover. Very, very cute. It goes like that. Super, super cute. So here are all the covers today that we made. I do wanna thank you guys so much um, for sticking around. I'm sure this video is pretty long, um, but hopefully you learned kind of the basis of how to build a cover out of an old book. Um, and then in part two, which should be coming up here soon on uh, YouTube for you guys, um, I'll kind of show you how to do the inside of the cover. Um, and then from there, we can start picking out our signature pages, cutting those down to size and putting those inside of our journal and finishing it. Um, so thank you so much for watching. If you liked this video, please like it. So I know that you liked it. Um, and until the next one, bye.